to you, sir, because I think you have quick wide experience in this area, including ESG. So tell us a little bit about how you see the world from your lens and what do you think both entrepreneurs and large companies are and should be doing. So firstly, I think I'll make a little bit of a shift. I'm really not going to talk much about uh, my companies or my group. I think it's well known, uh, unlike the other two fellow panelists of mine. Um, I will talk a little bit more about how sustainability is becoming relevant and uh, why is it, particularly when it comes to a large industry like textiles or apparel, which I represented for decades. Uh, I retired after 41 years, so it's been a long innings. Um, you know, what's happened is that uh, we all know that uh, over the last uh, several decades, fast fashion has become very, very popular. Uh, companies which were taking out two collections a season now, there are companies in the world which take out 52 collections uh, in a year, which means they come out with a collection practically every week. So what's, what's this doing? This is leading to overconsumption. It's leading to companies uh, making, taking shortcuts, uh, quality of products are not good, uh, not up to the mark, longevity of these products is in doubt. And the net result of all this is a disaster for the economy, for the uh, environment, environmental economy. Uh, the textile and apparel industry is more than two trillion dollars. So it is one of the largest industries in the world. And surprisingly, only 1% of the textile industry waste or post-consumer waste plus textile fiber waste is reused. And uh, this is disastrous because the rest of it, either in fabric form or cloth apparel form or in textile fiber form goes either to the incinerator or it goes into landfills. Most of it actually goes into landfills. So we have a serious issue as far as this industry is concerned. Uh, what is the remedy for it? Well, the remedy is very simple. Uh, we have to get back to some of the older ways. Uh, we have to, fast fashion has to go out of fashion, literally and figuratively. Uh, Good quality products which have longevity for consumers needs to come back into work. Uh, textile recycling and the biggest theme today in terms of environmental sustainability is what we are talking about recycling and circularity. So these two have taken center stage and Europe is leading the way because with the Europe they have come out with a new policy which from 1st of January 2025 will prevent any consumers from trashing their textile products. They will have to give it to recyclers, which means there's a new industry sprouting up of recyclers around the world. And what is being promoted, what is being promoted is very simple. We want the industry and the consumers to become more aware of the environmental impact that this industry has. Uh, just to give you a sense of this, 10% uh, of the water consumption globally is by the textile industry. 20% of chemicals used globally are used by the textile industry. 190,000 tons of microfibers goes into ocean as a result of the effluent discharge plus washing of clothes. Uh, this is colossal and over and above this which is really what is very surprising there's almost more than 10 percent of global warming impact is coming or uh, what we call the greenhouse gases is being generated by this industry so the scale of impact of this industry is huge and unless and until uh, the europeans have shown the way they are promoting reuse, repair, uh, and repair is something which had gone completely out of work. Nobody thinks of getting their clothes repaired by a tailor or by a suitable company which does repair. Reuse, uh, there's a new concept of renting which has started, 
which is very interesting too. Uh, nobody thought that people will rent clothes. Now people are renting clothes. So there is a movement globally to bring uh, the awareness of sustainability and what are the negative impacts of fast fashion. Coming back to uh, what is really, what do industries do? Uh, what can they do? Uh, I think Ashish talked about their goals for, you know, greenhouse gases or coming to net zero or water consumption. Uh, but, you know, for an industry like ours, which is spread through about 40 countries and, you know, uh, with hundreds and hundreds of units, this whole issue of bringing our factory, firstly, to begin with factories, not just offices, every factory uh, to have a science-based target for uh, uh, cutting down greenhouse gases, uh, cutting down water consumption, becoming water positive and not just water neutral uh, and uh, with the eminent uh, you know knowledge that if you are in India uh, you are going to face a water famine uh, 10 years from now exactly 10 years from now almost 40 percent of India will be actually not having drinking water uh, I had the distinction of chairing the World Business Council for uh, uh, you know sustainable development for water and I tell you the crisis of our water is even worse than the crisis for greenhouse gases. So how does the industry globally do it? And uh, a business group like ours, uh, uh, what uh, you know, Ashish said was right. You first got to get map out what is your consumption of, you know, what is your environmental impact in terms of greenhouse gases uh, or energy consumption or water consumption and then go about systematically preparing a plan to reduce this. What is the global industry going to do? Very interestingly, uh, I think at the last uh, China, uh, you know, uh, the uh, meeting of the Chinese legislature which took place uh, last year, China decided to de-emphasize textile. It's not very well known because it is the largest player in the world in textile with almost close to 25-30% global market share. And uh, therefore, there's a lot of countries who suddenly feel that they're in the run uh, to be part of the China Plus policy so that whether it's Vietnam, whether it's Bangladesh, whether it's India, uh, any of these aspiring countries who want a, a share of that pie. So how does this have a, you know impact on the global economy? Uh, on the global environmental system. So what has happened now with Europe coming out with its policy, which is going to become a reality very soon, uh, the whole world is now clamoring for new technologies. New technologies for reuse, for, uh, you know, uh, circularity, for promoting circularity. So uh, I believe the, the Europeans have divided this into three segments. There's going to be a mechanical reprocessing, there's going to be a chemical reprocessing, and there's going to be a hybrid where it's, it's a mixture of mechanical, thermal, and chemical kind of reprocessing. Secondly, it is very difficult when you blend different fibers to actually segregate these and extract them and make them into a new fabric or a new textile usable clothing. So uh, there's a lot of work happening on blended technology. You know, uh, what's, how are we going to remove the blends? Is it going to be physical? Is it going to be a chemical process? Is it going to be a polymeric process? So I think what is becoming apparent is that mechanical and chemical reprocessing of monofibers will probably happen faster in a year or two, but blends will take longer, maybe three to four years. And the target is that if from this 1% recycling we can move to 10, 15%, 20%, 25% over time, it will make a very, very big impact on the environmental footprint, especially in terms of landfills. And I think uh, the whole world is now moving towards it. Uh, every brand has become very conscious. All marquee brands, all major brands around the world are now talking about sustainability. They are. Uh, put in place uh, do's and don'ts on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So a lot of work will have to be done, not just by the big companies, but also like 
Pranati said the challenge is for the small and medium scale sector to really come up to comply with some of these regulations and to make sure that they remain relevant. So I think the global industry, the global textile and apparel industry, which is one of the most impactful industry in terms of negative environmental footprint, uh, is trying to get its act together, but it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a long time, a lot of effort, and of course, a lot of capex uh, in new technologies. So that's really what I would like to say about the textile and apparel industry globally. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. That was, I think, very